Hi guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney if you don't know me already and on my channel I react to all things America and other stuff as well. So if you want to get New Zealanders perspective definitely hit that subscribe button down below. So in today's video we are checking out the US Space Force, what it is and what will it do. I actually just reacted to a video and it was the US military versus the China military and who would win and they did mention the Space Force in there so I thought we'd watch this video to kind of learn more about it and what it's going to do and how it's going to progress over the years. I don't know what the US Space Force's plan is moving forward obviously is to do with space and protecting places and space satellites and all that but I just don't know beyond that so it's going to be an interesting video. Let's get into it. This video is brought to you by Blue Apron. The first 50 people to sign up using the link in the description will get $50 off their first two weeks. Space, the final frontier, and for our modern militaries, the indispensable high ground. Whereas decades ago, whoever controlled the sky would likely win the war, space has become the new critical high ground that nations must protect and defend against their enemies if they want to ensure victory. In today's episode of the Infographic Show, we ask Space Force, what would it do? Why is space so important to a modern military? The answer to that question lies in the unique vantage point that space provides. With a small constellation of satellites, you can see everything happening in the world at once. And with cloud-penetrating radar, even a rainy day won't hide the enemy from your sight. Being able to see means being able to target an enemy with today's high-tech weapons. Everything from cruise missiles to GPS-guided artillery shells take advantage of advanced recon capabilities to locate, track, and destroy an enemy. This is why we don't carpet bomb our foes the way we used to back in World War II. But space is important for communications too. Typical radio communications only work for short ranges, thanks to the curvature of the Earth, and can be prone to atmospheric interference or interception or jamming by the enemy. With a satellite in orbit though, military units can always be in direct communication with each other, no matter where in the world they are, and satellites allow a military to deploy advanced and very secure communication technologies that are difficult to intercept or jam. Basically, space is important because with eyes in the sky, you can always see your enemy and you can always talk to your friends. And with so many high-tech weapon systems, there's no nation on Earth that space is more important to than the United States, who, with 123 assets in space, wow, has nearly twice as many military satellites as Russia, the number two contender, with 74. But what would an American Space Force do exactly? Well, at first it wouldn't be as glamorous as what you see in sci-fi movies, though given the rate of human technological advancement, it's only a matter of time before we take to the stars and war inevitably comes with us. The first job of a US Space Force would be to consolidate all the various space assets each American military service branch has. Right now, American military satellites are divided up between the major branches of the military, the Air Force, Army, and Navy, as well as some of the federal institutions such as the National Reconnaissance Office. In the event of a major war, it may be hard to coordinate between all those assets and share information freely back and forth between the services. This is where the US Space Force mm. would come in. By consolidating US space assets into a single branch of the military, Smart. the Space Force would make it easier to coordinate the sharing of critical information and respond really to enemy smart. attempts to sabotage or destroy American military satellites. Commanders in a battle zone would have just one agency to ask for help from, rather than trying to get information from multiple agencies at once. The Space Force would also be tasked with military surveillance and reconnaissance. It would be responsible for developing new recon technologies and coordinating with American industry on how best to get them into space. Once in space, the Space Force would monitor for enemy activity and be ready to immediately raise the alarm if an attack is suspected. But Space Force surveillance would also be important during peacetime. In recent years, American space assets have been the leading source of information on the North Korean nuclear program. By carefully monitoring suspected test sites, American space assets were able to determine when underground detonations were taking place, as well as estimating wow. yield and even giving insights to the type of weapon tested. Reconnaissance wow. photos of missile test sites showed us how close to building and perfecting a long-range missile the North Koreans actually were. In the future, the US Space Force would take over these duties, meaning its members would have to be on constant alert against rogue states. Another area of responsibility for the US Space Force would be in the realm of logistics, where it would take a day or more to move even just a few pieces of military hardware from one place to the next by air, sea, or land, 
an orbital logistics hub could have that same hardware anywhere in the world in just a few hours. While this is still currently wow. outside the realm of our technology, it's not as far off as one might think. Wow. And America's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, has been looking into what it would take to deliver supplies from orbit to the ground safely for years. While in the next few years, we might see orbital drops of hardware, such as food, ammunition, and medical supplies, it might not be long before American servicemen are themselves stationed in orbit and ready to deploy within a moment's notice. As one senior American official once said, getting 2,000 American boots on the ground anywhere in the world within two hours could stop a lot of wars before they even begin. But why put troops in space if you can put weapons instead? While the militarization of space is a hot-button topic, and most American defense officials are not eager to open up another arena of weaponized conflict, the reality is that in all likelihood, someone sooner or later will put physical weapons in space. Despite the Outer Space Treaty banning weapons of mass destruction in space, it does not specifically prohibit conventional weapons, a fact that the Soviet Union took advantage of in the 1970s when it was the first and only nation to put a weapon in space. Installed aboard its Almaz space station, the R-23M Kartek cannon was designed to fire explosive shells at American space vessels. But the Kartek was only the tip of the iceberg for what's possible if you really want to weaponize space. Known as Rods from God and codenamed Thor, the US military studied the possibility of creating an orbital strike platform that used nothing more than solid tungsten rods about 20 feet long and one foot in diameter to deliver devastating bombardments against enemy installations or troop concentrations. Hopelessly outnumbered by the hordes of Soviet tanks that threatened to swallow up Cold War Europe, American scientists were looking for a way to neutralize large armored columns without the use of nuclear weapons and thus avoid the risk of nuclear war. They theorized that using kinetic energy alone, a telephone pole sized rod made of solid tungsten and equipped only with a very basic guidance package and a pair of fins could deliver a blast along the lines of a small tactical nuclear weapon. Physics shows that they weren't wrong. Dropped from orbit, those rods could have reached speeds up to 10 times the speed of sound. Since force equals mass times acceleration, each rod would have generated an incredible amount of energy. Despite President Trump's executive order, the purpose and aim of the US Space Force is still under official review, with most defense insiders saying that the need for a dedicated Space Force isn't yet critical. Yet as the expansion of the American commercial space industry has shown, humanity's expansion into the solar system and beyond is inevitable. And as our own history shows, where man goes, war follows. Eventually, the United States and every other modern nation on Earth is going to need a space force or be at the mercy of those who already have one. So, what do you think about the US Space Force? Should the US be preparing for future conflicts now so as to help prevent them in the first place? Or would it only invite other nations to start militarizing space? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Moab, the mother of all bombs. Thanks for watching. All right. So that question about should the US be preparing for future conflicts now? Yes, I think it's a good thing that the US has created a space force because if they don't do it, then they're going to be far behind their enemies, China and Russia. I did watch a previous video and they were saying that China's space budget is so high. So they're actually investing a lot into space. So obviously I feel like the United States needs to do something now instead of waiting five, six, seven years or even two or three years later, it's going to be, you know, they might as well start now and start these processes and stuff like that. I think a space force is inevitable. So I think it's a good thing that they're starting it early rather than later. Very interesting stuff coming out in this video eh? about the orbit transportation system and the fact that they had ideas of putting military members in the orbit. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. I don't know how that would work, but that would be insane. Just the fact that the US Space Force controls the satellites now, like they said at the start of the video, if someone needs to um, get a hold of someone in the satellites, they have to go through the Navy, the Army, you know, the Air Force to find out who in particular 
has the satellite data that they need but if it's a space force everything is just so much easier and faster and more efficient it just totally makes sense even for that reason you know so um i think it's a fantastic idea that they're going ahead and creating the space force it makes sense and you just can't be left behind in something like this it's definitely revolutionary and um yeah a big big deal it's pretty insane it's pretty insane but that was a really good video and i definitely learned a lot about the different aspects of the space force so let me know if you guys enjoyed this video as well if you do want to teach me something new beyond this video beyond the information in this video definitely feel free to leave a comment down below if you do have another recommendation do head over to my website which i will link down below or just leave a comment down below and apart from that thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i will see you all in my next video bye guys Mwah.